Welcome, Bishop Thomas. Thank you very much, Ron, and greetings to all our good listeners and viewers. So glad you're with us again. And Ron, thank you so very much for standing in for Ron Miller, who is away. We're always grateful for your company here and you're taking the show forward with us. Well, we go from one Ron to another. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy for me because I just have to remember Ron. <laughs> <laughs> yes, true. Well, Bishop, uh, a lot of things are, uh, are happening this is the time of year where a lot of things are taking place. Uh, what's on your schedule for the uh, coming week? Sure, and our folks know I always like to share the schedule with them, especially about diocesan events and maybe uh, things from my own calendar. So first, I think, because this will air on the 11th of November, we certainly want to say a very happy Veterans Day to all of those who are veterans and to recognize them, to honor them, and to let them know that they are in our thoughts and in our prayers. So we're grateful, obviously prayerfully grateful for all our deceased veterans, prayerfully grateful for all our living veterans who we support with our thoughts and prayers. And uh, the next, I, I think one of the things we want to mention right away, of course, is that the upcoming play, which is very, very significant for us, is something which I also just wrote my article for Leading the Flock, so you'll see that. And I want to endorse and show you, because here's the visual, folks, for people who are watching on video. And this is to invite you and encourage you to attend one of the performances of Tolton from Slave to Priest. So it's a multimedia presentation done by St. Luke's Productions. And it's a wonderful expose into the persona of the very first African-American Catholic priest. And I can't think, Ron, any other time than these challenging times regarding racism and racial, you know, uh, discord, that this would be something very critical for us to see, to engage in, and to really learn about a black Catholic. So November also happens to be back Black Catholic History Month. So how appropriate. So I invite you to look on our website, which is at reconnecttoledo.org slash Tolton. And you can find these performances, and they're going to be folks throughout the diocese. So on November the 12th, I'll go to the performance in Tiffin, which is on Friday the 12th at St. Mary's at 7 p.m. Then on the 13th in Lima, which is Saturday at 7.30 p.m. at Lima Central Catholic. Then on the 14th in Mansfield, that's Sunday, at St. Peter's High School, that's at 3 p.m. Then on Wednesday the 17th in the Toledo metro area at the Ohio Theater and Event Center. That's at 10 a.m. and also at 7 p.m. And then on the 18th, Thursday, also at 10 a.m. at the Ohio Theater. So please do uh, come to this performance live by the actor Jim Coleman. I can assure you it will be something both inspiring and engaging. And I think it will be something that benefits us as a diocese in order to learn more about Augustus Tolton. So that's that's just a major event, but it's happening mm -hmm. six times, Ron. And I know the folks have worked very, very hard to bring that to our diocese, so I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. Folks, during this week, and there's an awful lot here to mention, Ron, so you'll have to be patient to get to the gospel if you don't mind. Okay. <laughs> we want to mention also, of course, that this would be the week, folks, that normally I would go to the USCCB fall November meetings. And that's usually from about, you know, the the 14th or 15th to the 18th. This year, dear friends, I will be prevented from going to that. And one of the reasons I wanted to share with you is because I won't be there is to be able to have a surgery. So please, I want your prayers and your thoughts. I'll undergo a lateral lumbar decompression for my back because I've been having a lot of pain in my back and I've been doctoring for my back. It's an often performed procedure and the prognosis is good that I would be up and around again within 24 hours, please God, but would require, of course, some time for recovery and physical therapy. So I wanted to make you good folks aware of this so that I might humbly ask for your prayers, for a success, for the surgery, and for a full recovery. So thank you very, very much for that kindness and generosity. And then just to add then a few other things prior to that surgery, our Friday, November 12th, I'll have a visit to uh, one of the, uh, to a pregnancy center, which is here in Metro Toledo called Mom's House. 
I will that evening, Friday the 12th, I'll be, as I mentioned, at one of the Tolton performances in Tiffin, St. Mary's. And then on Saturday the 13th, I'll have the great joy of visiting once again St. Peter's in Mansfield to consecrate their new altar and bless their new ambo. So it's a great uh, a great opportunity to be there with them and a tremendous accomplishment to complete their renovated church with those final sac sanctuary elements. Great. Thank you, Ron. Very busy, and we'll certainly uh, be praying for you uh, leading up to the 18th and on the 18th. I appreciate that very much. Thank you so much. And uh, Bishop, uh, let's uh, get to a recent gospel, shall we? Please. Uh, from the 32nd Sunday in, in Ordinary Time. Thank you. Our gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of, wind houses of widows and, as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they have all contributed from their surplus wealth. But she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. Your thoughts, Bishop? Thank you, Ron. And folks, this gospel from St. Mark, familiar, of course, to us, I must say there was one phrase that jumped out to me when I reflected on this in preparation for our taping of this Bishop's Corner show today, and that was this, speaking about the scribes, and it talks about they like places of honor and synagogues and banquets, and then it says... They devour the houses of widows. It's not a unique phrase. They devour the houses of widows and as a pretext recite lengthy prayers. It seems to me that what they're getting at is they take advantage of people and they take advantage of them fundamentally for themselves. And obviously, if as a pretext, they're reciting lengthy prayers, it almost sounds, doesn't it, folks, as if these are not sincere. These are things which are sort of uh, pretextual. That is, that they're meaningless. They only do them for show. So I think that is placed up against the example of this widow. So often we remember the terminology, don't we? The widow's might. We've heard that description or expression of this gospel. So these two small coins worth, we're told, only a few cents. And Jesus compliments this charity by saying that she put in more than everyone else because she gave from her poverty while the others gave from their surplus. Obviously, giving is something all of us want to do as stewards, always remembering the poor and those in need. And there's no question that all of us want to give, not compromising, for example, our own families, but so many people tell me that when they reflect on it, they realize so many blessings from the Lord, especially at this Thanksgiving time, and they recognize this is a moment to perhaps give more so that others might have their needs fulfilled. So I will offer that as my brief reflection, and then just reiterate, Ron, it's really quite something. Thanks be to God, because of your good help, folks. Our annual Catholic appeal has done splendidly this year, and in this Thanksgiving time, we're reaching out, asking those who perhaps gave last year but haven't yet given this year, or perhaps haven't given at all yet, to make a generous, sacrificial gift to our annual Catholic appeal so that we might continue all of our pastoral ministries throughout our 19 county dioceses. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Thank you, Bishop. I think we'll have time to sneak in a question here, if you don't mind. Thank you. I'm anxious to do so. Let's uh, get started here with, uh, we have a question from Thomas in Toledo. Thank you, Thomas, for writing in. Who writes, Your Excellency, I'm a bit confused on the, quote, synod on synod synodality. 
Uh, what are the reasons for it, and what does the Pope, what does Pope Francis hope to achieve? I fear it could bring doctrinal changes or usher in New Age theology, but I do not want to jump to any conclusions. Can you provide some clarity on this undertaking? Thank you. Thank you so much, and, and I'm really appreciative of the question because I can tell you, Thomas, lots of people are asking me this question. So first of all, I don't know if you have read it yet, but I would direct you and all our listeners and viewers, Thomas, to my Leading the Flock column, which I wrote a little while ago. And that column is the fundamental, what I find, the fundamental explanation of what this synod on synodality is all about. Now, we have to be mindful that synod is going to be a universal synod to take place in 2023. So every diocese is not being asked to hold a synod, but this is a diocesan preparatory phase the Pope has asked for to engage in so that we might offer information from the diocese to the Conference of Bishops and then the Conference, Conference of Bishops to the Holy See in preparation for that universal synod. Now, I can tell you, Thomas, one person said, well, Bishop, I don't understand. It sounds to me like it's a meeting about meetings. Well, in a way, that's true, because fundamentally, it's about how do we encounter, listen, dialogue, and engage one another regarding the church herself. So if you will, I, I, I don't have time on this show, but if you will, please read my Leading the Flock, available obviously on our website, because for us here in the Diocese of Toledo, our purpose we've defined as the effort, using the very words that the Holy Father has given, that we might be deepening our communion with Christ in the Holy Spirit, deepening our participation with Christ in the Holy Spirit, and deepening our mission with Christ in the Holy Spirit. And in this, I think I try to, Thomas, actually address one of the comments you made, and that is simply to indicate that uh, certainly the path of synodality is not some sort of political process where participants vote on issues. And I also try to point out what a synod is and what a synod is not. So I hope that will be helpful to you as we engage this. And on our website, you can actually find a whole section just on this with all the information from the Holy See and how we're going to, as a diocese, engage in this preparatory phase. Okay. Great. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Thomas, Thank you. for that question. And uh, Bishop, we have, a, we have a lot of great questions uh, to get to. We're but you to, have to take a break, don't you? take a break here now, <laughs> but we'll come back and get to as many of your questions as possible here on the Bishop's Corner. Annunciation Radio is your voice for the Diocese of Toledo. Serving Northwest and North Central Ohio for over 10 years, Annunciation Radio is your home for the Bishop's Corner and other great local shows from our own diocese like Say Yes to Life with Peter Range, Understanding Scripture with Father Dave Nuss, and our live local Catholic morning show, Morning Offering. Listen live on your radio or anytime on demand on the Annunciation Radio app or website. And we are back. Welcome back to the Bishop's Corner here on Annunciation Radio. So Bishop. glad you're sticking with us, folks. Thank you. Glad to have Bishop Thomas here uh, every week to answer your questions. You can submit them uh, pretty much anytime you'd like. Go to uh, the website, AnnunciationRadio.com, or uh, click on the Bishop's Corner link on the app or on the websites. You can also email your questions directly, Bishop at AnnunciationRadio.com. There's a quick form on the Annunciation Radio app for that as well. Please remember, uh, just so uh, the bishop has some idea who he's talking to, please include your first name and the parish or community that you're from. And, uh, of course, uh, we get to as many questions as possible. We have a lot to get to today. And it's always nice to have some sense of the person to whom we're speaking, so thank you for that. Absolutely. And we're going to go, uh, Bishop, to uh, a question from uh, Eileen, who is listening on WNOC. Thank you, Eileen. Dear Bishop Thomas, have there been any new vocations or anyone interested in the religious life that we can be praying for? So thanks, Eileen, for that thoughtful question. And in fact, it's helpful because it highlights, Eileen, the week that we are in at the very moment, and that is we're in National Vocations Awareness Week. So how appropriate for you to ask that question. And if I may first direct you, and since you're listening, WNOC, I'm not sure wherever you are, 
and whether or not you're actually within the Diocese of Toledo. But I can tell you, Eileen, that our diocese publishes vocations posters every year, and they go out in the fall, usually in September. And in every parish and in most schools, there are posters in the narthex, usually, of the parish church or elsewhere on the parish campus. One poster with our seminarians studying for the diocesan priesthood for the Diocese of Toledo. The other poster of our religious who are studying for religious congregations, male and female, who are native sons and daughters of the diocese. So if you haven't seen those yet, please look for them, or maybe ask your, if you're from the diocese, ask your pastor where they are, because that's where you can see our current vocations for the diocesan priesthood of the Diocese of Toledo and for various religious congregations. And you need to know of our diocesan seminarians, at least three, actually, Eileen, are new, and there are a few new folks, male and female, who are pursuing a religious vocation who have now stepped forward and said yes to discernment to that vocation. So thanks for the question. And with this question, it's very important for me to encourage and cajole all of our viewers and listeners again in this week of prayer for vocations, National Vocations Awareness Week, to please beg the Lord and the saints, beg the Lord to send more workers into the harvest as diocesan priests and to send young men and women the openness to a vocation to religious life, consecrated life, within and beyond the diocese. Very good. Thank you, Bishop. Uh, yeah, we're praying for vocations, and uh, that I have another vocations uh, question. We go from— It's uh, a little more specified, I yeah, think, Ron. Yeah, from WNOC in the Bowling Green, Toledo area, we go out to uh, uh, the Mansfield area, St. Mary of the Snows, uh, John— who writes, Dear Bishop, our group regularly prays for vocations to the priesthood and religious life. The other day we were discussing barriers some may feel, may, uh, some men may feel are obstacles in discerning a vocation. We were wondering if having tattoos or body piercings automatically disqualify someone. Are there rules regarding this? Thank you, John. So thank you, John, so much. Appreciate your asking the question. And first of all, I just have to say thank you to you and to the group, if it is a parish group from St. Mary of the Snows. Thank you so very, very much for being so intentional in praying for vocations to the priesthood and the consecrated life. And that's what this one week, National Vocations Awareness Week, tries to do is heighten awareness so the groups like yours all through the year will be praying and speaking about and encouraging vocations. So just a note, of course, there would be, naturally, there will be some obstacles to answering or discerning a vocation. You're wondering specifically in your question about tattoos or body piercings, body piercings automatically disqualifying someone. So the simple answer is that a body piercing or a tattoo would not automatically disqualify someone. Now, obviously, we know that, you know, piercings, you can remove whatever the piercing might be. You can also have tattoos removed or covered up. So I think you have to understand there is no automatic disqualification of someone. And I can share with you, you know, what if a man's been in the military? And, you know, lots of military men have, you know, they get a tattoo on their back or their leg. Well, that in itself would not disqualify someone. The piercing, you know, of wearing an earring would not automatically disqualify someone. But I think we have to ask the question, what's maybe the nature of that tattoo? And if the nature of that too is, is lewd or inappropriate, certainly you'd want to address those going forward. But notice, we're talking about simply somebody being admitted to the seminary to discern a vocation. So obviously, th this is something that would not of itself disqualify, but each case would have to be taken individually to consider what it was and then to consider how the person might go forward if, in fact, a vocation is discerned and if they move towards serving the church in the priesthood or consecrated life. Yeah, it just seems to me that uh, if the focus when you're looking at a priest is on 
any body art or anything like that, then it's a misplaced focus. Well, for example, I mean, there might be someone, let's say they have a neck tattoo, do you know? And uh, I don't know, as, as someone is admitted to the seminary, would they speak about whether that can be removed? Would they talk about what's the nature of it? I mean, a lot of people, frankly, have tattoos which are religiously inspired. So a lot of people have these crosses, and I know a young Hispanic man who had a big tattoo of Our Lady of Guadalupe. So I think you have to ask yourself, what's the nature of the tattoo, number one? And then how distracting might that be for, you know, or is it any cause of wonderment to the faithful, for example? Yeah. Thank you. That was, a, that was a good question. We appreciate the question. Thank you, John. And uh, Bishop, we've got uh, we've got one. Can we also. keep going on now? Yeah, let's let's uh, let's talk with uh, Dan in Mansfield. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Dan says, "Dear Bishop, can you?" Share We're sort your... of in the same area of the yeah, diocese yeah, there. Yeah, from uh, yeah, uh, can you share your thoughts about the Texas abortion laws and the struggle within the court system that seems to be taking place? Thank you, Dan. So obviously, I'm not exactly certain the date that you wrote this question, and I hope you and I know, that, and everybody listening and watching knows that this has been an ongoing and very complex process. So at this moment, Dan, I can't give you the, uh, the ins and outs of every possible bill and what it says and what they're trying for, et cetera. But I think, Dan, for listeners and viewers, if we just boil it down to what are they trying to do? What is their effort? Their effort is to save lives because their effort in Texas fundamentally is to ban abortions. So if we tried to make it simplified that way, I think that's the way we speak of it, to say that the whole purpose of these efforts is to save the lives of the vulnerable, the unborn, and those who have no one to defend them because they are defenseless babies in the womb. In that regard, then, obviously, you know, my take, and I think the take of anyone who would call themselves Catholic and pro-life would be that these are things which we would certainly look to so that an ab abortions may end, that we might respect every child in the womb as made in the image and likeness of God, that we would promote the dignity and sanctity of every human life, in particular, the most defenseless and innocent who are yet to be born. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop, and thank you so much for that question. Uh, Bishop, we've only got can about we, a minute or two left. Can we do it? I think we can sneak another question in I here. think we might be able to. Let's uh, let's go to Vincent uh, in Oregon. Thank you, Vincent. Dear Bishop Thomas, it was just announced that Pope Francis is to visit Canada on a pilgrimage of healing and reconciliation with indigenous peoples. Do you know the details of his visit and if he may cross the border and come to America? Thanks, Vincent, for the question. Of course, I hope you know that I, I don't sit on the Vatican papal uh, visit team, so I don't have details to the visit, and I'm not involved in any way in what he might or might not do. My first answer, and you know my, my left hand in this, Vincent, if you listen, is to start at the end, and that is I have no indication. I've seen nothing, Vincent, which tells us that the Pope plans to come from Canada into the United States. There is no indication of that insofar as the things that I have read or seen on the Vatican website or on news reports. What we have seen is the Catholic Conference of Bishops of Canada has invited the Holy Father to make an apostolic journey to Canada, also in the context of the longstanding pastoral process of reconciliation with indigenous peoples. His Holiness has indicated his willingness to visit the country on a date to be settled in due course. This was from the Holy See's press office. So that's really what is happening. I have no further information to share with you. I'm sure if you check the Vatican website periodically, you might be able to see when a date will be planned if the Holy Father is able to make that apostolic visit. And you may or may not know when he makes an apostolic visit to a country, it usually is to that country alone. Good. Very good. And you did that in, in perfect time. Did it work? Oh, my goodness. Pretty good. Folks, how about that? We can, can we get another question in, Ron? No, we cannot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, thank you I so thought much I'd push it, in. folks, just for the fun of it. <laughs> Could you give us a prayer and a blessing? Surely. So we'll take our prayer from the 32nd Sunday of Ordinary Time, from which we took our gospel. Let us pray. 
Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank, thank you, you so very much, folks. And I do thank you again for your remembrance and prayer for that back surgery that I will have on Thursday, November the 18th. For my surgery and recovery, I'm deeply grateful. Thank you. We'll definitely be praying. Uh, thank you so much for your questions, Bishop. Thank you uh, for taking the time to answer them. Always a pleasure. We'll do this again. Look forward to it. See you next time on the Bishop's Corner. Thanks, everyone. God bless you.